talking about transfers. And Antoine Griezmann's image consultant has said that taking on the iconic number seven shirt at Manchester United will do wonders for his marketing potential. I mean, that statement's a little bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? Yes, he's kind of stating the obvious. Um, but people say stuff for a reason. Um, you know, replacing Cristiano at Real Madrid would also improve his... There have been so many hints for a long time that he would uh, they would be happy with an approach. He's kind of served his time. That number seven shirt, I mean, it has been fantastic for some players, not so good for others. I mean, some of the players, Di Maria, Memphis Depay, Michael Owen wore it for a bit. Obviously, in the past, you've got sort of Brian Robson and greats like that. But it, it, And Beckham is the ultimate. Eric Cantona, of course, as well. Um, but what will it do for a player, do you think? And could it put excess pressure on their shoulders, do you think, wearing that number seven? I can imagine if, if you were a United fan and you grew up idol, idolizing Cantona or Beckham, and some people suggest that Griezmann was a United fan, but and you dreamt of the shirt and then maybe you get some complex, but I mean, these guys are professionals. You know, you could put Griezmann in number 99 and it wouldn't make much of a difference. Which, by the way, was a they're a superstitious. <laughs> yeah, they're a superstitious bunch, though, aren't they, footballers? Who knows what's going through their minds? Um, yes, they <laughs> are, but I don't think they would necessarily link it to the shirt. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm old school. When I think of iconic football shirts, mm -hmm. there's only one number that really matters, and that's number ten. And a lot of great players have worn that, including David Beckham before he got the number seven shirt. Ah, a little known fact. Thank you. <laughs> well, there you go. Tune in here. You never know what you might learn. Oh, Arsenal, my Arsenal, say the Arsenal fans after that. I was that worried about what you were going to say there. At the weekend. No, I'm just going to throw... If this is a stick of dynamite, I'm just going to leave it there and I'm going to sit back What's and on? let you explode. Benzema to Arsenal? Never mind that. Wenger's the issue. Discuss. I, I, I'm getting more upset about Arsenal than Arsenal fans. <laughs> I am. Arsenal fan TV. I mean, was that there. the most predictable result of the weekend? Uh, losing to Chelsea? At, you know, away from home in such a meek fashion. 12 points off the league, off the top of the league. Who's to blame? Let's cut to the... Wenger. Arsene Wenger is to... Look, this guy... Nobody's saying this guy has not been hugely su successful between 1996 and 2004. But since 2004... Uh, and the Premier League, it's been, it's been a shambles. This is 2017, that's 13 years ago. How weak are the Arsenal fans? Are they in a competition to see how, uh, if they can win the weakest fans award <laughs> in, in, in Britain? Because any other fans would be stamping their feet and raising their voice and saying, this is unacceptable. Or maybe the Arsenal fans are a mirror image of Stan Kroenke, the owner, and his shareholders that we're just happy because we're making money and we're in the Champions League. That's success every year, we're in the top four. And we're, we're running a good business. Now, I get from, a, from a, an owner's point of view, who has little clue about football, and Cronky doesn't, then it's about making money. But it's not what it's for for the supporters. Get out there and start letting your voice be heard. Benzema's been linked with Arsenal. I don't want to talk too much about this. Who said that, Wenger? It's in the press. It must be true. OK, so at the weekend, Benzema... Benzema's linked. I want, to, I want you to have a look at this graphic as to what Benzema has done over the last three years. Now, we're not going to spend much time about this. We're not going to answer the question, is Benzema the right fit for Arsenal? Because as far as Craig Burley is concerned, Arsene Wenger is the issue here. Correct. You're having a go at the Arsenal fans. Yes. What can they do? You have got an all-empowering guy now who pretty much runs the show and will decide when he leaves Arsenal in charge. Well, so what more can the well, Arsenal fans well, do? Well, he, well I, what can they do? They said they were going to protest last year. Protest? And they pitched up and they started arguing with each other. You, you, Wenger's been great. No, you sit down. No, you sit down. I mean, how pathetic. The fans do have a voice. Okay. Right? And but. that voice matters. And, and when, when, when it's 50 and 60,000, then it pressurises and, and it makes shareholders and it makes owners and it makes Wenger sit up and notice. I mean, he's already said, after the home defeat to Watford, when he was banished to the stands, uh, and he never, he never moaned about that, he said, no, I accept it, he was up in the stands, he already heard some of it, and he didn't like it. And I'm not saying it's nice to hear, but if Arsenal want change, the supporters have to get off their backside and show the stomach for a fight 
and getting change at Arsenal. I would give to you, protest all you want, but you have to vote with your feet here because ultimately shareholders are in businesses to make money. If season ticket holders don't buy season tickets, if they finally say we've had enough, it's going to hit their coffers. Yes. That, for me, is the only thing that's going to send a message. Not 20,000 people standing with placards and waving whatever and going Well, if you're, if you're in the main stand next to the director's box, that makes a difference. I've been there, I've seen it, uh, and I know the supporters on occasions like this can, can help encourage change. Because if it doesn't, Arsene Wenger doesn't look as if he's going to walk from this job. He's too ignorant or he's too arrogant, I don't know which one it is, it's easy street all round, the club makes money, Wenger gets paid a fortune, and Arsenal are once again, they'll never end the title race. I am going to smash them on our show tonight, trust me, because I'm embarrassed for them, and Arsenal fans should be embarrassed. 12 points behind Chelsea at this stage of the season. How many years without a league title? I'm sorry. Do you know what we could have easily called that Craig Burley's boiling point? This week's player power rankings are editors across the globe at ESPNFC have come up with this as a top <laughs> ten. What are you laughing at? <laughs> editors across the globe. Well, now you no left any stone unturned. No. no matter what country you're in, you've had an opinion on this somewhere. Now you're about to hammer them. Um, four for Lukaku, four for Parolo, but one is in first and one is in fifth. Do you agree with the lineup? Jesus. Well, Am Romelu Sick Lukaku... Is all on target? Is I, I, they can put it what we, whatever way they want. I'm not particularly bothered. <laughs> you know, to score four goals is a great achievement. I mean, Bournemouth are not exactly the strongest team, but he is having a good period, uh, Romelu Lukaku. He's had a lot of stick on our show. <laughs> not necessarily from me, I have to say. I, mean, I think it's uh, Stevie Nicol. He's not here to defend himself. <laughs> Maybe it's a Liverpool thing. I don't know. But, yeah... He had, a, I mean, four goals were, was great for him. Obviously, Jesus is a big story. A young guy comes in, hit the ground running, but more importantly, he's taking the place of Sergio Aguero, and, and that's no easy thing to do. Uh, and at the moment, that's not changing. See, the thing that was interesting for me, uh, one of our colleagues here who does the stats had Aguero as his captain, based on what Pep said in his press conference, that he can play wide left and Aguero can play through the middle. Never believe a manager at no, a press conference on a can, Friday. Can they play together, Gabriel Jesus and Sergio Aguero? Why would you? But why wouldn't you? But why would you? <laughs> he's just come in, he's, he's, he's hit the ground running, he's yeah. got two again at the weekend. Why would you change it? Why does everybody want to try and shoehorn people in? Do you think that Manchester... Oh, you've just scored a couple of goals again. You've just hit the ground running. Go and play out in the left wing. Why can't you play as Marcus strikers? Rashford, go and play out there. Why you don't you get the same product. Because that's generally not what, what Guardiola... Or, Generally, or, or, Do you think they were good a lot in that game for the majority of the second half against Swansea? Did they win? They won just, right. but it was nervous. Don't get a striker who's scoring goals and put him on the left wing or the right wing. Put him up right. top with Aguero, who's the Smart best striker Alex. in the world, or one of them. Well, he's, he's done all right on his own since he's been in. Anyway. Let's move on. <laughs> one guy who I thought... Should be higher. No, I'm, I'm, it should it's like, be higher. Was that his twin brother that pitched up in England at Man United Doesn't and Chelsea? Doesn't matter. He or scored it... two against Nice. Yes. And it was the top of the table. Well, that, listen, don't shoot the messenger. I don't put them in this order. All I'm saying is, he was finished 18 months ago. It's not now. He was finished. Now, he, he was a kid at Palmeiras 18 months ago. Come on now. Well, he's you a more experienced player. You Goodness can't judge me. him on what he's he He's played in World Cups. Yes. Right. All of a sudden, is it the French League? I, I, I don't know. Is it his fitness? I don't know. Good to see a player back anyway, yes. and Monaco are going to be a big threat to, to his team yes. in the Champions League. Hazard? What a goal. Bad last year, wasn't he? Player of the year, so he's going to be bad next year. Player of the year, but this is from bad. the weekend. Player of the year. This isn't from last year or this week. No, that, I know. That's a All I'm saying is a trend here. Player of the year, terrible. <laughs> Possible player of the year contention again, so what's coming next year? But he really has bought into Antonio Conte. It was a great goal. Embarrassing from Arsenal's point of view. Shrugging them off. Little babies out the way. And he's only a small guy. <laughs> I'm scared what you're going to do with number eight. Bearing in mind it's from the weekend. Not from five years ago. Not from two years ago. Fernando Torres. Do you know when Fernando Torres first came to Liverpool? I was, that's him commentating regular in the UK. He was the best striker in Europe for a long period. So what he, happened? He lost confidence. He lost fitness. He lost that that pace, mm -hmm. and then it's difficult to get back. I can remember his first 12 to 18 months at Liverpool. The best. Running away from people, battering defenders, finishing. Nice to see him getting some goals, because he's had a tough time, and he's had a lot of stick, from me included. Mkhitaryan. Mkhitaryan's oh, a, a good player. You're very argumentative today. I'm not argumentative. Mkhitaryan's, Mkhitaryan's a good player. 
all this start of the season nonsense, bedding them in, get your good players in, get them up to speed, get them linking up with, with your other players and forming a relationship and a partnership. That's what we're starting to see uh, from him. He's only a slight guy, he's not the biggest and most physical, but he's played in Germany, he's playing well in England at the moment. And, uh, and the yeah. ball got two in the Sam Allardyce derby. Well, this was a cracker. We were in here on Saturday yeah. watching this result come in, 4-0 at half-time. I've always said about him, I don't know why he went to Toronto, because he was at the peak of his career. He did, he goal sussed scorer. it out, came back. He's a goal scorer, one of the most natural goal scorers that's been in the Premier League for a long time. Should always be in the England squad when fit, in my opinion, as somebody that can come off the bench, because he's natural. He kept Sunderland up last year with 13 goals. He might do it again. Uh, fabulous.